Okay, and we're away once once again. Morning everyone. I'm being told the stream has an excellent connection, so we'll see. We'll see if that's the case. Um Hi, welcome back. Animation session two. Masks and pats. I did say on the first one that I'd be coming back to masks. Um because I sort of glossed over it a little bit when we were doing the little animated logo and the text appearing. We're going to do something similar. Um, before we start, can I check, double check the dates for the courses due to start on the 31st? It's bank holiday. Yeah, um, someone, you'd, I think you told Daniel about that yesterday, so he's going to, I think we're having a look now to see if we're going to reschedule it or not. Um, just just hold, hold tight on that one. Obviously, we'll not, I don't think we'll be doing anything on a bank holiday, so um, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll get it sorted, we'll get an answer. Um, the guys are working on that as we speak. So yeah, morning everyone. Hi Charlotte, hi Sue, hi everyone else who's here. Um, we're gonna have a little look at masks. I'm just gonna mute my phone. Oops. Um, yeah, cool. So we sort of briefly touched on um, using masks originally. I'm gonna show you today how to animate them. So I'm gonna be talking about loads of complicated stuff, but it, it's once you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm doing. Um, if you guys have any questions, I've got the chat settings on. Like, it should be quite quick for me to see it, so I'll just keep an eye on that, um, and then, and then we'll go from there. Cool. So, as always, in the description of the video, there will be a link to download HitFilm Express. There will also be a link to a Google Drive, and in that Google Drive, I believe I'm just going to double check. There should be all of the required footage for a day. So there's all, there's two videos in there. That's all that's in there. We're just again we're going to keep it dead simple because we're all, it is just a beginner's course. We're going to look at some text. Um, these techniques do work with putting objects in. So you could put images in. You can um, you can do that with pretty much anything. So next week I'm thinking we're going to look at using the, the mask tool a little bit more to create some custom shapes and animate those custom shapes. Um, I don't want to do that without covering what the masks can do and how you animate them and stuff first. So that, that's that's going to be today. And then next week we're going to look at maybe some, creating some shapes within HitFilm Express. How you do that and um, how you can animate them. It's probably starting off with something dead basic like arrows and um, normally just a circle. Normally the, the standard one is a circle or a square. Um, morning, and Andy's here as well, so good morning. Okay, so we'll get started. So I'm just going to shrink down the bones of this window because it's a little bit, the top and bottom get cut off a little bit. So give me a sec. And there we are. Okay, cool. So remember, when you open HitFilm Express, you'll see all this magical, like, gubbins in the corner. Um, just click, you want new. And if that option isn't there for whatever reason, you can go to file a new as well. And that'll bring up your... Uh, new project window so in your new project window again I don't really mess around with this too much the only thing I'll ever change is the duration so just to give myself a little bit more actually five seconds we'll leave it on five seconds for now we can change this as well once we once we start the, the project so 1920 by 1080 which is, is full HD we're gonna we're gonna stick with 25 frames per second for now as you remember from last week the more frames per second there is sometimes the more animation you've got to do because between zero and one on the timeline at the minute there'll be 25 frames but if we set it to 60 between zero seconds and one second there'll be 60 individual frames in there so if we're animating something frame by frame which we're going to do today and it's 60 frames per second that's a lot a lot of work and a lot of time so just bear that in mind when you're making your animations 24 25 even 30 is manageable um, I tend to stick to 24 25 just because it has a fewer frames per second the higher the more frames per second you have the smoother your animation is going to be though so bear that in mind as well um, what I would say if you're working with footage like we're going to do today it's probably best to match what the footage is as well so whatever the, the ones that are in there don't bother changing it for now but if you're doing your own stuff you're making an animation from scratch bear that in mind that frame rate because that will affect how much frame by frame work you've got to do 
Um, audio, that's a that's a decent enough sample rate as well. So we'll just we'll okay that, um, and then it'll open up the horrible loading screen that normally crashes. Yeah, there we go. Right on cue. So if you guys have any, have any questions about any of the stuff that I cover or have covered in the previous weeks as well, give me a shout. I might not be able to answer them right now, live on air, but I can definitely get you an answer um, at some stage. So as you remember, this is HitFilm Express. Um, this is a completely blank and empty project. So there's nothing in it. There's no footage, there's no sounds, there's no shapes, no. Uh, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to import it. You guys will have to download the footage from the Google Drive um, link, which is in the, the description of the video. I've got them downloaded in various places on my computer, so I'm just going to click on import. And I want this car footage short, so I open that up. What we're going to do today, in fact, I can probably show you really quick the one that I did as like a little test if I can find it just show you guys this bear with me a second where is it at then aha here it is so I made one and it was called car reveal I think So the car's driving down the road, and then a bit of text pops out from behind it, and it gets left on the road and goes away. Now you could do this with anything. So any footage of something moving, you could have some text appear from behind it, but what you have to do is you have to mask it out. So you have to mask out the shape of the car on the text. So anyone who's used Photoshop before, when it's a still image, that's what you would do. You would cut out the edge of the object that you're trying to hide the text behind. It becomes a little bit trickier in animation because obviously the frame's moving. So as as that moves, the mask has to move with it. Um, and But there's a, a bunch of useful features in pretty much every animation software now that allows you to animate points on the mask. So you can draw the points in and then as the time goes on, you can move them. And that's what we're going to have a little look at today. Now, again, like I said, it doesn't have to be text. So it could be anything being revealed from behind this car as long as I can draw a mask and animate it. So these skills are like directly transferable. Um, and you can even see there, if you look quite closely, a little mistake that I've made on that mask there, there's a little gap where you can see the road in the text. So again, attention to detail, practice, that sort of thing. Um, and I did, I think I did a little bit of motion tracking to get it to stick to the road as well. You see it sticks to the road as the, the car moves down it. Um, so we're going to have a little recap on that as well. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I'll double check that no one's asked any scary questions. No, we're good. Okay, cool. So that, that's the car footage. Obviously, this is it blank. This is without, without us doing anything to it. So with all the animations that we do in HitFilm Express, we're going to bring our footage in or bring whatever it is. And, and remember, we're going to make a new composite shot. And if you remember, the composite shot allows us access to the animation features. If I just drag this footage into the timeline, this is just like having it in Premiere. So you can't really do anything. There's no like layers you can add above it to um, add in like the, the text and, and the masks and that sort of thing. What you do is you would right click on your footage and make a composite shot. And again, it's picked out the duration. So the duration of that video is eight seconds. So it's automatically set to that. Um, it's asking us what do I want to name it so within the project what do I want this composite shot to be called well I'm going to call it um, car mask and 1920 1080 25 frames per second so that's matching the video we'll just okay that and then here we go so it's brought me separately from the editor into this car mask um, composite shot and that is going to allow me to, to, to add all the different effects that I want to add on. Um, Sue is asking, would the masking work with the text from the front as well? So if the text was appearing from the front, yes, so you could have it the other way. So you can have the text be in front of the car and when the car drives over it, it disappears behind the mask. Yes, it's just reversing the, the way around it. Um, that's a little bit trickier to get your head around, but we, we can definitely it can definitely be done. 
Um, this this stuff, the masking stuff, will take a lot of practice because it's it's tricky to understand. Okay, where's that layer going to be at that point in time? If you do a mask in Photoshop, it's obviously it's one still image. It's a little bit trickier with this because the mask moves as the object moves, if that makes sense. So you, you've got to time it right. Luckily, you can change all the points at any given moment with using your keyframes, um, like we've been doing. So I've got my car footage. Um, for now, I'm not really going to do anything with that. Um, I might mute it because this has got, actually got um, a little bit of audio on it. So I don't, I don't want you guys to have to listen to that playback constantly. So I'm not. I'm just going to turn the decibels down to minus fifty, so we can't hear it. So when I play it, it doesn't play any sounds. I'm going to drop me render quality down a little bit. Um, stick that on there. Quick. Also, um, I finally found the access to the setting. So I had it hidden before for some reason. If your footage like mine has been is playing like this where it's sort of like juddering along i couldn't i had it for some reason i had this option hidden um there's a little button here and if i hover over it it's called um preview now what preview does if i press it can you see i'm getting a little blue like a really obvious blue bar there it's pre-rendering those frames so that they'll play smoothly it only goes so far in your clip i think it's like five seconds it'll render I'll just let it run through and I'll show you what it does. It looks like it might render the whole clip actually. We'll see. We'll just we'll do that and we'll hope for the best. Okay, yes, so it's rendered that whole clip. So if I go back to the start now that I've pressed that button, you see the playback's a lot smoother. So when you've made a change and you've added a mask and you've animated some stuff in, it might be worth pressing this little button. So there's a there's the next there's the um, play pause button, yeah, and the one to the right of that should be preview, um, and that'll render your footage a little bit better. So you can you can see there, even when I'm scrubbing through, it's not jumping all over the place. Now, for some reason, I don't know what settings I had it on, but that wasn't there <laughs> last week. I think by default it's supposed to be there, but I'd messed around with what was displaying. So if if you can't see for whatever reason what what you've added to your timeline, come in and do a little preview. And that'll render a little, a little chunk of the the project for you to be able to view it in real time as it's happening. So I'll, I'll show you guys that as we as we go on. Um, so I've got my car footage, and all I need to do now is sort of decide. So if I just fit that scale to fit for now, so that's the car just sort of trundling down the road. Yeah, I need to just decide now where I want that text to appear. So I think I'll probably have it come in as that car drives over that see the line there so it's driving over this like past this line here that's probably the point i want the text to come like spewing out the back of the car and what i'm going to do now then so i've, I've picked the point i wanted to come in i'm just going to leave the time indicator there and i'm just going to go to my text tool which is that little a there so there's like a capital a and if i just click it will add a text layer in and i'm just going to type in um I'll just do drive again. I'm going to put mine in all caps because I think it looks a little bit better in all caps. So I'm going to highlight that text again. And remember, I'm going to have to come down. If I want to change how the text looks, I have to come down here and there's a few tabs open along the top. One of them you kind of quite see. So there's a little arrow there. I'm just going to press that, go down to text. And I can change the font, the size, the color, whether it's bold or italic or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to cycle through the font. So I clicked on one and now I'm just using the arrow keys on my keyboard to just cycle through all those fonts. And there's the one I used yesterday. So let's use a different one. Um, let's have a look. Um, that one. That'll do. Okay. And I'm just going to drag the size up a little bit. Now, when you changing the size of it be careful because what you don't want essentially you want it to look like it's coming from the car so this shouldn't be bigger so if that was like that it's going to be hard for me to look like it's coming out of the car if that makes sense so you want it to sort of fit within the bounds of the car itself um i'm going to go a little bit smaller so i'm going to make that 80 and then i'm going to drag it up 
using that green arrow there and the red arrow goes left and right remember the green ones up and down and then there's a little square here and if I hover over that it brings up a circle so if I click and drag on that that's the rotation so that's I'm gonna just align it sort of with that white line so that it looks like it's in line with the road something like that um, I might even shift it up a little bit and just give it another little twist that way like that so that's gonna come out of the car like that and end up being left on the road yeah so we've got our text in it's the layers called new text um you can probably rename that to be honest to just call it um i'm gonna call it text layer one and i'll explain why i'm going to duplicate it later but don't worry about that for now but it's good again the habit of renaming your layers so just right click um rename the car footage that's a fine name i know what that means um i also know that at this point in time that's where i want the text to start appearing so i'm going to drop I'm going to drop down my text layer one. I'm going to go down to transform and I'm going to set a keyframe. So on the position. So I'm going to go to the position. I'm going to go to my little circle and I'm going to say at this point in time, at one second, I'm going to have my position keyframe. That's where I wanted to start. Yeah. And then I'm just going to scrub my timeline on a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to do it to the point that the car gets past that line. So the car's moved from that line. Yeah. So it's, it's away from it. I'm going to say, right, okay, at that point in time, so where this timeline marker is, I want the text to have sprung to about there. Yeah, so it's dropped out from behind. So at the minute, all that's happening in this animation, and let me just do a little preview, like I was saying. Yeah, so all that's happening there is the text is just shooting out from, from the car. Now at the minute, that's over the top of the car so obviously it looks like it's on top of the car there you can see it what we're going to what we're going to do next is we're going to hide it behind the car so it looks like it's coming out from behind it and we're going to do that by adding a mask in um and we can add the mask directly onto the text layer so i covered it a little bit we did that i did an apple logo remember and the text was coming out from behind it it's the same sort of deal except it's a little bit more complicated because we have to essentially follow this car as it moves. So we have to create a mask on the edge of the car that then moves as the car drives down that road. So it, it's a little bit trickier than that, basically. Um, let me just grab So I'm just gonna zoom in. So I'm zooming in and out there by just using the scroll wheel on me mouse. If you make a mess of zooming in and out, so say, the, the, the way the zoom works with the scroll wheel is wherever your mouse is pointing it'll zoom in on that part of the image so you can always just wheel out like all the way out and bring the mouse to where you want to be and then wheel back in um, and if you make a mess of both of them things there's a little percentage indicator a zoom percentage indicator in the bottom right if you come back drop that down and go to scale to fit it'll bring you back out to the, the full frame Hopefully that makes sense because um, I've had a few times where I, if, if you draw on the mask you can end up like slightly in the wrong place so like there's a bit cut off there what I'd probably do in that instance is come back out and just zoom like wheel back in so I can see the top again um, so yeah so we've got our text it's popping out from the co from the car but at the minute it's on top of it which isn't really what we want so I'm going to have the timeline marker on that first keyframe that the text position so that's the starting position of the text yeah so remember that the first keyframe is where it starts the second keyframe is where it finishes so keep that in line because what we're going to do is we're going to animate the mask from that point basically we don't have to worry about anything moving before that because that's when the text comes in so if I scroll it I'm doing exactly what I told you not to do <laughs> Can't even listen to me on advice um, okay so about there so I, so I need to zoom into a point where I can see the full end of the car um, probably including the tire to be honest so I'm gonna grab that hand tool and just drag down a little bit like that okay so select me text layer and I'm gonna add a mask to it and I'm gonna use this pen tool here so that's the pen tool there 
it's the freehand mask if you hover over it is what it's called but it, the icon for it's a little pen um, like a fountain pen so what this does when you click on it it'll go you might not be able to see it so much on my screen but on yours you will it's like highlighted in like a blue um, and what this does is now every time I click it's gonna add a point to it except oh yeah it has so you can see I'm drawing a mask here yeah so that would mask it out in this shape so I'm just gonna undo what I've done there so when you've got that tool selected it doesn't show you a pen on the screen but that now your pointer is adding separate points to this um, to the mask that you're adding so let me grab that again and all you have to do now is obviously make sure like I say you've got your text layer selected and line your mouse up with the edge of the car and just start adding some mask points in so I'm just clicking around the edge very similar to what you do with the pen tool in Photoshop or the polygonal lasso um, and just come around anyone who's used the pen tool before you'll remember you can drag out the corners to make a bezier curve I know Lisa loves making a bezier curve in our Photoshop sessions um, so that can give you like a curved edge I have however made a complete mess of that if you make a mess of one of the points click on it it'll select it because the little little things will come out either side and just press the delete key which is above backspace um, and then you can just come back in and re-add those points so I can just draw around the edge give that a little drag out and what you can also do is hover over them and you see you get that cursor that allows you to move them so if I've if I've accidentally clicked out there and that's miles away I can literally just drag that back in and you can I don't know how well you can make it out on mine but you will be able to see it on yours there's a line following all these as well so that's the path um, and I'm, I'm actually just gonna do the tire down the bottom as well um, you probably get away with not doing it but I'm, I think my text might be slightly too big to leave it out so and then I've drawn a rough shape around the edge and um, it could be better to be honest I'm not gonna lie let's just make a couple of little alterations to you then Uh, and delete that one that I've just added there. I'm gonna delete that one out. I'm gonna add another one in there, and I'm just gonna shift it up a little bit. I wish you would behave yourself. Okay. So rough. Like for now, it's going to take a little while to get used to. Um, you can as well add a point. So if you think you've missed a point, um, like in between two, see if I hover over it, the line turns white. If I click there, it adds another point in. Um, and then if you want to delete one, you just click on it, delete key. Yeah. So I've got the outline. Now I just need to tell it which way to go. So I, I could mask it one or two ways. Um, I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to just draw the lines out like this and then come back around the way I started so if I then come back around to this first point it completes that mask okay so what this mask's doing at the minute is it's only gonna just I've, I've added it to this text layer yeah so that that's what it's controlling so it's only gonna display the text when it's in um, that area there so if the text in any other area in the frame it's gonna it's just going to show it in here if it's in anywhere else it's going to hide it um, and you can invert that so there's a little button there little one there it looks like a little square with a circle in it um, that'll invert it and what that'll do is it'll show it everywhere else but in this area so that would be a good one if it was like the opposite to so you might that might, might be a tight if you were doing it driving over you might invert your mask so instead of it being left behind you might have it driving over it you would just swap that round um we might have a little go if we have time i'll show you like reversing it round. but basically this area now is the only bit of the frame that the text will be visible in but can you see what it's done because i've added it to the text layer so i've got the mask selected at the moment because i haven't told the mask where to be at any point in time what it's done is it's it's got the same animation as the text so if you remember the text was popping in 
from behind that car. We'll just turn the mask off. The text is there, yeah? But the mask is also doing that. So the mask's taking these keyframes and doing the same thing. So it's, it's following. So instead of the mask sitting in place here, where it should be so that the text gets revealed at the moment, it's coming over here, which we don't want it to do. So we're gonna, we're gonna animate the mask now. We're gonna tell the mask where to be at any moment in time so that the text can appear. So we're gonna just take the time selector back to um, the first keyframe. If you double click on a keyframe as well, so if you hover over a keyframe and double click, it'll take the timeline to it. So you can hover on that first one, double click. Be very careful doing that. What you don't want to do is click and drag it because obviously that'll change what time it appears in. So if if you're struggling to double click on stuff and you're accidentally dragging keyframes, just actually physically get the timeline mark out and just take it to that first keyframe before it moves. Um, that That's quite important because what you don't want to do is accidentally drag your keyframes all over the place and, and the timing will all be off. Okay, so Turn the mask back on, and what we want to do next is we're going to just take the transform thing off that. So on the text layer, when you drop the options down, so if it's flat, drop the options down, and then you'll have this property that's masks. Yeah, and, and the mask there, that one, is the one we've just added. You can color code them if you've got more than one as well. So if you click on that little square there, you know, you could have a color coded version, um, and the little square will tell you which one's which. Um, I think you can probably, yeah, you can probably even rename them. Um, so back of car. Yeah, so I know that mask is the back of the car. Yeah. So if I drop that down again, and I drop down um, transform, so we have a couple of things now that we want to add a keyframe onto. So we have the, the position, as always, when we're animating stuff, we want to move its position left and right, up and down, diagonal, wherever. But we also want to add a keyframe for the path. Now, again, anyone who's used a pen tool before um, or worked with masks in Photoshop, you'll probably know, or Photo P even, you'll know what the path is. So the path is that thing that I drew. So all these key, all these um, mask points, all these pen points, these squares that are here, they're part of the path. So the path is this weird outline, this like orange outline. You can animate that path. So if your shape changes during the video moving, so take for example, my hand, yeah? You're watching that now. As as I do that, the shape of my hand changes, right? So if I, on the first frame of the video, I draw a shape around this, and then as the video goes on, I do this, those points that I've drawn around my fingers will have to move and change. The path has to change because the shape's changed. Um, luckily, it's the one I've picked, the car, it doesn't change in shape because it's not a transformer. But what, what we have to do, because the camera zooms out a little bit, is it ends up being smaller within the frame. So we have to take some of those points in. Um, I'll show you, but that's what we're doing. So we're adding a keyframe on path and we're adding a keyframe on position so that basically we can now jump a couple of frames ahead. So if you remember, there's a little button here where my mouse is sort of hovering. And that's the next frame. So if I jump to the next frame, you can see the mask has now left the, the back end of that car. We don't want it to do that. We want it to be stuck to the end of the car. So I'm literally gonna get me moved to the um, selection tool there. And it is called the selection tool, that one there. And I'm just gonna sort of move that back towards the car like that and can you see it's already starting to reveal the text so this is where you can see whether your text is like overlapping with it so what you don't want is your text to be on top of the car like that you want it to appear like it's coming from behind it and you're just using that outline to do so um and if i click back to me pen tool i can see all these points and let me just Increase the view there. So can you see here, it's added a keyframe when I've moved that mask there. When I've moved the whole shape over, it's added a keyframe. But if I grab one of these points and move it in, can you see it's added the keyframe for the path as well? So I'm saying at that point in time, I want this point here, at this moment in time here, I want this little particular point to be slightly moved in so that 
the text isn't appearing um, on top of the car. So you can move all these individual points. This is technically called something ridiculous like rotoscoping, um, which is, a, it was a really, really old fashioned way of animating. So they would project a video onto a like almost um, opaque surface and then animators would trace over the top of it. So they would have a, a seat, like someone running. Um, I don't know why, what that is, that's not running. Um, so they'd have someone running and as a video, as a video that they captured on a camera and then they would project that onto a screen where someone would then trace it over, literally frame by frame. So this is being done frame by frame, so it's, it's, it's rotoscope and it's the same sort of process. We're tracing something in real time, one frame at a time. Um, it's essentially adding a mask to something on a, on a still image, but then you're putting all those images together so you've got the motion. So come ahead another frame again, and again, the mask's moved again, so I can grab my selection tool and I can drag my mask back towards my car. And I think all the points on the path are actually fine. So if I click back on that, they're all okay. So I click back on my pen tool. They're all roughly in line with where they need to be. So on that one, I don't need to change the path again. So if I skip ahead another frame and get my selection tool and drag the mask back, just have it in line. So that white line wants to be in line with the edge of the car. And again, because I think I've done a pretty good job with drawing the line, I took a little bit more time adding my pen points don't necessarily need to change the path again none of these need to change because they're not they're not missing so if one of them was like down um say here like that can you see there's a gap there obviously i'd have to take that back but at the moment they're all sitting quite well on the edge of that car like i say with moving footage sometimes the camera moves the, either the subject moves away from the camera or you know changes direction or changes shape this one won't change shape but the camera moves out a little bit at some point because it's a drone footage so the car's driving down the road and the drone sort of goes back so the car ends up being smaller in the frame so sometimes you'll have to grab those points in but this one's pretty stable so i'm just going to keep skipping through one frame at a time so that's that it's like two lines and a play button that's to skip to the next frame um, and again i'm going to get my selection tool and i'm just going to drag that in so that it lines up with the edge I'm just going to take it back a little bit. Yeah. And again, I think my path is fine there. I might nudge that one in a touch. And that should be all right. Um, and again, skip ahead of frame. And I want that to and drag that back in. So I've been a bit silly here, really. I could have used a three-letter word because it would have been easier because obviously I would have had to... This, the text would have came in quicker if, the, if it was shorter. Um, and again, on this one, my path has changed a little bit because the car is sort of, the camera's moved within the frame. So I'm just gonna grab that. He says as he grabs the wrong bit, I'm gonna grab that. Um, I will get it in a minute, don't worry about that. Take that in just a touch. Just move that down a little bit there. Yeah. So again, it's trial and error. Um, you'll get you get used to this. I, I, it's it's really good to have a go at doing things like this. Um, just drag those in a little bit, and then I'm going to skip ahead to my next frame again. And. Remember, selection tool, which is that top one. It like, looks like a little arrow. It looks like the move tool a little bit in Photoshop, uh, if anyone's used that. And just line that up with the edge again. And now I need to change my path because it's not quite overlapping with the edge of the car. It's just going to drag them out of touch. Yeah, and you can see I'm leaning right into the screen to see this is bad. This is bad posture. So try not to do that. I'm, I'm very guilty of it. I'll move my laptop a little bit closer. I'm also conscious that the camera's on and I'm like right in the right up in your grill this morning. Um, so yeah, apologies for that. 
I haven't had a shave or anything. I did brush my teeth this morning though, so you know that's all right. Um, so yeah, next frame. Grab that. We're nearly there. I can. See, we're at all. Oh, there's only two more letters to go. Okay. Um, things like down here as well. Like I'm, I'm faffing on with the wheel, right? So I'm, I'm just getting like pedantic with where the the um, points are positioned down here. The text isn't actually coming in down here, so you wouldn't even notice these points down here because the text only coming out from the back. So to be honest, I've probably dragged my mask. I've probably drawn my mask a little bit too low. But what you want is a little bit of a of a sort of like safety area. Um, so what you don't want is if the text accidentally comes up above here that it's clipping over the top of the car and same on the bottom. So you want to give yourself a little bit of room when you're drawing your mask top and bottom. So that you don't get um it doesn't get stuck. Um yeah, so I'm just gonna drag up a little bit. So I'm still pretty much in line with that. I might just drag it in a touch. Like that. Um next frame. We're almost there. So again, just gonna drag it back into place. I think the path is all right. Again, you guys will be able to have your resolution on higher. So if I drop this down and I go to me resolution, um, if you put it on that, it'll be much higher and you'll be able to see the exact edges of the car. Um, mine, I can't run the streaming software and have it on the full settings because it literally just lags to death. Um, also, what you'll remember, what you have to remember when you're doing stuff like this. If you remember how small the car is in the frame, if there is little errors on the edge, you probably won't notice it so much, especially not with stuff that's moving quite quick. So the car's on this shot not moving that fast, but if you've got one that's moving really fast, while you're coming fast, it'll not be as noticeable if you make some errors on where your points are on that edge, if that makes sense. Um, it is unfortunately this is this rotoscoping process is done frame by frame, which it as you can see, it can get a little bit tedious, um, but it can generate some really cool effects. And once you get good at it and you've practiced a whole bunch, it, it becomes a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm just gonna drop that there. I'm pretty happy with that, and then I'll do next again. So one more, I think one more frame might do it, you know, or one more for this maybe. Yeah, so one more frame, drag that back in. And if I zoom out a little bit, ah, right, okay, I just need to edit the mask um, a little bit. What has happened there then? Let me just, I'm just going to play that through. Ah, I see what's happened. I see, I see, I see. The mask just needs to be a little bit longer on the first bit. So, and now where are we at? Gonna add a keyframe in though, possibly. Right, okay. So I just need to go back to the bit where it gets right. So I've I've made a bit of a mistake here then, which is fine. Um, so the point where it gets to there, can you see? I need that to come out to here because at the moment it's not big enough. So I'm just gonna drag those points out a little bit further because it's cutting off the end of the text. So hopefully that's just fixed it. So let me just render that. So remember, we're going to do a little preview, that little port, that little play button there. Yeah. So before I did that little bit on the end, it was just cutting off the text. So if that happens, if the text ends up cut off for whatever reason, so if I delete that keyframe that I just added in there, um, can you see here, the text is slightly too long for the size of the mask. So just at the point that it sort of drops out there and gets cut off, 
and it's here isn't it so yeah can you see the point that that e starts to get cut off I literally just drag the mask out to give it a little bit more room to breathe um, and now if I play it through so if I take it back to this first keyframe and if I just do me a little preview yeah it always does that okay cool so if I just play that through now in real time yeah I can probably even go back to the start and do a preview from there to be honest yeah but why are you not pausing I press the pause button and it just like sort of ignores us a little bit uh, so if I scale the fit we'll play that through so I've, I've done my little preview to render just this part so where this little blue bar is is the part of the clip that it's rendered just for us to see in real time so I press space bar on that so we've got that effect down as it appear in front excuse me from behind the car um, yeah sure actually that might be a good shout getting a laptop stand to be fair um, where I'm not like like this I've got I my posture is terrible though like I, even at home I'll be sitting up straight for about 10 minutes and I slowly but surely just like slump into my chair so it's, uh, it's not the best so you were saying as well Charlotte that the had a scene of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs um, Snow White dancing that was rotoscope yeah so they'll have done that's it's really good knowledge because I didn't actually know that one but I'm a guessing They'll have, they'll have took like a real person dancing so nowadays what you would do or what they would do saying you you don't have to do this you would do motion capture which I sort of talked about last week when we talked about the tracking so you have that weird suit on with like all the baubles on it um, and you sort of run and jump around and that and then they can use that data um, of they have like a million cameras pointed at it and all the little baubles have dots on so they know where your left elbow was or your right your thumb was and they, they can apply that motion to like an animated character but back in the day they would literally have to trace frame by frame someone's movement to get motion capture which is like an absolute I, I, that was just putting some text coming from behind a car could you imagine having to animate every point of that um around someone say walking it, it's it's really hard work in this context though it's all right um So Charlotte, I will. What I'll do is I'll take a screenshot for you, and I'll put it on the drive um, of where the, the play button, the, the preview button is. So give me a second. Oops. And I'll get me out my trusty highlighter out. You can't really see that actually, can you? I wonder if I can do like a. Is there a pen? You're getting all the drawing skills today, like. But we'll even write preview. Oh god, I can't. I can't do it. There we go. Okay, I'll stick that on the drive as well. Um, in the in that folder. Two secs. I don't know why Google Chrome's insisting on opening. Uh, good breath, Hatham, but we can't tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can tell no shape. I know, it's coming. I'm going to get a haircut as well, don't worry. Daniel's showing us up with his, um, his, his fresh hair. It's a problem. But everywhere's appointment only, so we have to we have to, uh, I have to to wait. I'll stick that on the drive now, Charlotte. So they'll be in today's folder. If you give me a second, I'll drop uh, an annotated screenshot of where the preview button is. If you just bear with me for a second till I find the folder. Um, show by the location. There we go. <coughs> oh, you! I'm an idiot. <coughs> Okay, that should be in there now. So there's a, there's a PNG um, called Preview Dash Button um, with like a big red horrible circle and, and my handwriting on it now of where the preview button is. Um, that will help you watch it back in real time and it shouldn't lag as much. <clears throat> and now I'm also choking on water, which I didn't think was possible. But here we are. <coughs> 
The screen is blurry. Hmm, right, hang on, let me have a look. As in the stream um, is coming through blurry. Let me have a look at my video settings. Um, it should be all right. Guys, let me know if, if you guys are, um, if it's blurring out for you. Um, if not, Amelia, if you try and click on, if you hover over like the YouTube stream, I'll show you. I'll show you on mine, hang on. Um, if you go to just like a uh, random YouTube video, um, so if I just go to the audio library. Oh, I'm an idiot. I've gone to the studio. Come on, man. Uh, you might get your ears blasted off here. Like, I'll tell you what, I'll quickly mute this. <laughs> So if you, if you go to your normal like YouTube video um, and then you just go to the little cog on the settings and try and change the quality and try and put it on 720p, that should clear that up. So that when you load, when they're watching the stream, um, go to settings, which is that little cog, and then try and up the quality to 720. Um, that's all I can suggest. I don't, as far as I can see, I'm not having any issues. Um, you'll probably be getting a few calls from me this week about the class. <laughs> yeah, it, to be honest, all the stuff we're doing is it it's I've put it beginners, but a lot of it is um a lot of the animation stuff is quite advanced. Um you are taking skills that you'll have learned on the Photoshop and the Photo P courses, but you're applying them to moving footage, which gives you a, a whole other dimension of a headache because you move it's moving as well as being hidden, if that makes sense. There's lots of stuff like that. So if you can get your head around what we've done, even just in the first bit, so like just just adding a mask and animating it so that it um it sort of moves with the with the object um, and for some strange reason i can't see the uh, the old path anymore oh, yeah so if you can get used to just adding these masks in and you know moving them around so that mask is just animating along with the car um, and it's not perfect, you know, there's little imperfections in there. So if you were really, really like, um, like you really wanted to be, get it right, um, you're a perfectionist, let's say, you could come in and you could go through frame by frame again and you could say, okay, well, at this point in time, actually, that, I've just spotted one, yeah, so that there is a little bit too far out. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that point there and I'm just going to drag it in a little bit. This is, you the more time you spend doing this part, the mask part, the more realistic it's going to look like the text is coming from behind it, if that makes sense. Um, on your first go, don't stress about getting it perfect because I can almost guarantee, as with everything, the first time you try something, it won't just, just work, <laughs> especially not with this kind of stuff. It, it, we're, quite, we're getting into quite high-end um, graphics, like motion graphics. Um, like I say, it, it can be logos that appear as well. Um, it it can be like little intros to like a a YouTube video. It can be an outro where you like your name gets left behind. Like it it can be like a film credit. Um, it, there's there's lots of cool stuff you can do with it, basically. Um, but we'll just play it through one more time just to show you guys what I've done. So it just sort of pops out. I tell you what, I'm gonna preview a little bit more so we can have it running for a few seconds. Let's, let's see. Okay, so preview it about there. I don't know why it keeps playing. Stop. Okay, so from zero seconds, the car is just rooting along. Now, because I haven't done any, I haven't done anything with the text. It sort of just sits there, so it's not really doing anything. So it's not following the road at the moment. It's sort of getting spewed out by the car. But I think I've done an all right job with the mask. So it looks there like it's just coming out from behind. Yeah, it's sort of just appearing from behind. But then, because I haven't done anything after that animation finishes, after the the text goes from left to right, it sort of just sits exactly where I left it in the frame. But obviously, as, as I was saying before, the camera moves so that the road becomes on a different angle. So the, the text is now sort of hovering in, in mid-air, um, which, which isn't great. We don't really want it to do that. So in that instance, what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to drop down this text layer i'm going to go back to me transform and drag me viewer in a little bit 
I'm going to go to the point where it finishes. So the last keyframe is where that animation finishes. What I want to do now is I want to make it look like it's sort of stuck to the road after it's left the car. Um, and to do that, I am going to duplicate the layer first. So I'm going to right click and go up to duplicate. Now the keyboard shortcut for that's control D. So if you hover on, if you click on the layer, hold down control, tap D, it will make an exact copy of the layer there. Um, what I might want to do now as well is on the new one, so it's got a little two in brackets if you can see that. I'm gonna right click on that and rename it to um, text layer two. And I'm gonna put two in capitals so I can actually see the difference. I'm going to put text layer 1 in capitals on that one as well so I can see the difference. So I've got text layer 1, which is the one that's animating from behind the cart, and then I've got this text layer 2. Now, because it's a direct copy, it's going to do exactly the same thing. Um, I don't really want it to animate at all, this text layer 2. So I'm going to leave that keyframe there in because the, those key, two keyframes are in the same place. So that's where it finishes. So at the moment, it starts there from behind the car and that mask and then it animates out from behind the mask. Yeah. That's text layer one. I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to scroll up the text layer two and that first keyframe, I'm just going to click on it and I'm just going to delete it because basically I just want, I want it to be in that position at the start. What I'm also going to do is can you see each layer has like a block following it? So a big long gray block there. That's where it's visible in the timeline. So I don't want text layer two to be visible until this point in time here. So I'm just gonna hover on that block and just drag it along to there. So I'm sort of playing a little trick on um, on the, the program because the, it's gonna look like the text is constantly there, but one text layer is gonna finish and the other one's gonna start, but because they're in the exact same place, it's seamless, they haven't disappeared. They're literally on top of each other like that and then one disappears but you don't you don't notice looking at it that anything's changed so i can go to the end and of tech and get text layer one and drag that down to where that marker is as well so you can see now that text layer one is going to play until this point because that's where the block ends and this one's not the block doesn't start until the other one finishes so if i just give that a little preview now yeah, so they're technically two separate layers that are playing there, except because they're in the exact same position, because I've defined that by that keyframe there. So that keyframe there is those two layers being in exactly the same place. Yeah, so it's, it's seamless. So the two separate layers, but because they're the same dimensions, they're the same size text, and they're in the exact same position within that frame, they, um, it looks like it's just sat still. Now, the reason I've done that is because I want to apply some motion tracking to this layer here. So it's going to be a little recap on what we did last week. I'm going to motion track the road and I'm going to tell this text to stay to that part of the road so that it gets stuck here. And then when this part of the road leaves the frame, so that this part of the road is going to go off the screen, um, the text will go with it. Yeah? Cool. <laughs> um... Right, hang on, because my me, me chat window has crashed. Two seconds. I will re try and refresh that and get back on. Uh, I think we've got David in the chat as well. Yeah, there we go, back in. Hi, mate. This might, be, um, this might be right up your street, this, hopefully. Obviously, if you're animating and your graphics and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I've added me two text layers in. One is disappearing at that point, the other one's appearing, but they're in the exact same position, so one's essentially taking over from the other. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna track the car footage again, but we're gonna track part of the road, and then we're gonna apply that tracking to the text layer that I've just added. Um, what I would say, I haven't done it, and I told you about 800 times last week to do it, so I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I'm gonna go to File and Save As, and I'm just gonna call this, um, I've already got like a bunch of projects because I've been practicing. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna call this car tracking um, session two. Yeah, I'm, so I'm just gonna save my project. So my project saved, if it crashes, it should recover it. Um, 
and then the, the like if it, if you, you won't lose anything basically and you, it won't um it won't drive you crazy pun sort of intended i guess uh yeah so we've got all we've got so far for anyone just joining us is i'll just do a little preview so the, t the car's driving down the road we've animated a little mask so that the, the text comes from behind it and then what we're going to do now starting from this point here uh, it's probably starting from i'm going to go that's the position telling that text where to be i'm going to go one frame past that so that it looks like it then sticks to the road after that so we don't want to replace this keyframe so if, if i put the tracker on and over I'll, and i leave it on this moment in time where that keyframe is and i add it to that it's going to replace that keyframe which i don't want to do so i'm just going to jump a single frame ahead um, and collapse text layer two and i'm going to go back to my car footage which i haven't actually used in a little while drop that down and can you remember we've got this tracks option and just press on the little plus there and it'll open up the tracking window um, and it'll open it up and remember all the settings we want are the default ones so we've got single point position only um, optical flow we you making open options and you can change your tolerance and your iterations i'm going to leave these on default for now if you've got footage that's a little bit more blurry remember you can try changing these settings and your tracker might be a little bit better um but if i okay that i've got me track me tracking point is there yeah so that's there at the minute i don't need it to be there i need to be over here um but remember to move it you get your selection tool and you hover over and you it's a little bit awkward so i'm just going to scale it up a little bit so you can see um so you if you click in here that's going to move the outer square if you click on the middle point that's going to move the middle point um if you hover between that the middle point and the corner of the red one so in between it's not on the corner of the red one because that'll scale it in the middle that'll drag the whole box around um, so we just want to drag that down and zoom in a little bit grab the hand tool and just drag the way we want to go so i want to track this part of the road now probably the best way i'd sort of think to do it is to track the actual line on the road so i'm just going to shrink that down and i'm going to shrink oh, that down um, so remember the red one is where it's going to try and put the tracking point the one outside is where it's going to be if it sort of has a bit of a time working it out um, so i'm going to zoom right in remember scroll wheel to zoom in i'm just going to drop my tracking point on there take that one down as well and then remember to do it again you just go back over to um you've got four little buttons here so you can do it one frame at a time by pressing the right one that'll track forward by one frame the one next to it it'll track forward and just try and automatically pick out where that is and then you've got we don't we don't need these ones because we don't want to go backwards we're only tracking forwards through the footage so when i say forwards i mean forwards in time um it's getting a bit complicated because it sounds like we're going to time machine we're not so forwards in time in the, the video clip yeah so forwards from this point if you wanted to go backwards you wanted to track something reverse you would do it backwards so back over from wherever this marker is so i'm just gonna have a go i'm just gonna press the track forward and see where if it can pick it up um, and it's done a pretty good job there so it's it, it's got quite a few frames and then remember it automatically stops when it can't find the tracking point anymore and you can come in and you can just edit you can drag that the wherever you think it should be um, so i'm going to drop it there if you think it's made a mistake with any of the tracking points as well you can jump back a frame and you can manually move where that tracking point was so i might just do that and see if it's getting these right or not um, tell you what actually let me just Let it do its thing. That one's kind of missed, so we'll just drag it up a little bit. Turn the other one ahead. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit confused again. Oh, I 
can see one there that I know, I almost certainly know is a mistake. <laughs> um, so can you see here where it's done like a little overlap? I'm just going to bring it back to this point. And I'm just going to try and unravel that a little bit. So that basically what you don't want is that point there is further back in time than the one next to it, but it's ended up further ahead. So your motion is going to end up jumping ahead to jump back. So you want them to be in a line, realistically. These want to be in like a straight line or as straight a line as possible. Um, this shot isn't perfect to do this with either. This is just like an added little bonus on what we did last week. So this is just bringing in some of the skills from last week. The reason it's not the greatest is because can you see when I zoom in, I'm tracking a point that's very, very blurry. So the software is having to work very hard to understand what it is um, and pick out that color. So that's, that's why it's getting a little bit confusing. Again, the motion won't be completely you know, smooth. Um, but remember for our tracker, so we've done the tracking points, yeah. So we've got all our tracking points in that time, yeah. So it's jumping across there like that, as if it's leaving the frame, it's part of the road. And what we want to do now is apply that to a layer. So step two, apply a layer. Uh, purpose wants to be transform, as in it's going to trans transform the text position. So the text is going to start in one place and it's going to transform its position off the screen. <clears throat> you want X and Y, um, and the layer is that text layer 2, because that's the one we added to be tracked. So if I do that, press apply, and then the really easy mistake to fall for is you'll play it now, and you're like, well, where's the text? You need to click back on your viewer over here, so in the top left. Um, and then now if we scrub through, so you'll notice, if I just do a preview again so that we can see it in real time, so you'll notice it sort of jumps a little bit so it ends up getting stuck to that um that line in the road now the reason that is is because that's the point that was i put the tracking point directly on that line so what you might want to do um to make it look a little bit less like it's getting sort of magnetized to that um, is come in here. So if I drop that down, there's all the keyframes from the tracking point. Remember, so every time that the track has worked out where it should be, it's added a keyframe, and there are all the keyframes of where it should be at any given moment in time. Um, what you can do to make it less like stuck, so you see it's sort of doing a little jump from there, is you can just change the anchor point. So you can drag that up a little bit. Ah, uh, hang on, except if you're going to do that, set a keyframe for the anchor point to be here, yeah, on the first frame when it's higher up, jump ahead to your next frame and then change it. Um, I think if I bring that up to here, is that going to work? Okay. Not quite happy with that. Ah, it's because I've moved the position. Right, okay, hang on. Let's undo that. Let's go to the next frame and then we'll grab that and we'll bring it up. We'll do that. Yeah, so I've had two keyframes in there just to, just to recap on what I did there because I, I did some I've made a slight mistake and I moved the position so be careful with that so I'll take them off take those anchor points off so at the moment it sort of jumps so when it, when it appears from behind the car it starts there that's where the text is supposed to be and then because where, where I added the tracker which was to down here it's jumped the anchor point from here to here so I don't want that to happen um so I want to set a keyframe of my anchor point where it is in the right place and then I want to go to the next one along yeah and I want to go to my anchor point and if I just I'm just hovering over that till I get that left and right arrow and I'm just clicking and dragging it left to bring it up so I just want that edge of the writing to be in line with that point there uh, so something like that so now if I scrub through it should so you see it's not changing vertically now it's popping out from behind the car and then it's not changing its vertical position whereas before it was jumping down onto the road um, 
and if we just give that a little once again scrub back to the start click the preview button Yeah, and then I'll just scrub back to the start now that I've done the little render and I'd collapse all my layers just so I can see what I'm doing and have a bit of less of a headache um, and then I'll scale to fit and I'll just play it through yeah so can you see that so that is basically the effect so we've done two things there we've well, we've done a bunch of things actually we've animated a little bit of text popping from the car we've then added a mask to it so that you can only see it as it crosses the path we moved all the anchor points on the edge of the car as it moved. So we, we had, a, that's like a dynamic mask, you call it. So the mask animates as the thing within the frame moves. In this in this sequence, it was a car. Um, that is quite a basic example of that. So some people will do really complicated ones, like I say, like with the rotoscoping sort of thing, where they'll, they'll, as someone running or moving or even just waving, like they'll, they'll replace the background as the hand moves. Very complicated. So this one I want you to have a go at um, with just the car. And see see how we how you get on with that. Um, it it's called rotoscoping, but don't worry about it. It's just it's just animating a mask basically. Um, and then I added a little bit of motion tracking to that text so that it it looked like it got stuck to the road when it when it came off. Um, but again, we covered that last week, so that's just a little recap on that. Um, so once more through. Yeah. Again, because I, I didn't really take my time on the motion track and I sort of just let it go through. Um, what you could do with that motion track, can you see the points sort of jump up and down a little bit, which that makes the animation a little bit more like juddery. Um, what you could do is spend a little bit more time with your, your tracking points. So you, again, you could track that one frame at a time. Um, and you might be able to do that when there's not like a million boy raters outside revving their engines and that. Uh, so I the tracking it, it's pretty good it gets to about there and it, it jumps a little bit so if I, if I scrub through slowly you can see it does a little bit of a wobble but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that to be honest like I say if you, if you weren't if you weren't happy with it you could go back in and, and retrack it um, and, and try and get your tracking points to be in as straight a line as possible remember you can edit each one and you can do it frame by frame as well so this this will seem really tedious when you first have a go at it because basically I've spent what like best part of an hour doing that and I've managed to animate a how many seconds? Two two seconds and nine two point one nine seconds worth of footage. So it is what it is in terms of um, like effort and and attention to detail are the two things that I, I can't stress enough really that you'll just have to practice with it. Um, I'm sure David can attest to the fact that it, you can spend hours and hours and hours and come up with like maybe it's twenty seconds worth of footage. But you've done it, do you know what I mean? And, and, and this sort of stuff, um, I know a couple of you guys are working on like particular projects as well. This stuff's like a really modern effect and it's a really like slick one. If you've got some really nice footage of something and it's like, say, the start of a short video presentation that you're doing, it can be really nice to have the title anime out from behind something. Um, it, it's tough, honestly, mate. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's really tough, so... I've tried to explain it in as plain terms as I can. I think you guys have, have got most of the skills, like the masking skills, I know you guys will be able to do. The, the only thing I'm worried about is the motion tracking, so I want you guys to have a couple of goes at that. Um, the video is going to be there forever, so you get to see my happy smiling mug on a Friday morning for as long as you have to, to get it. <clears throat> um, come back and... If you're struggling with it in particular, if you let me know which part you're struggling with as well, um, like say, oh, you know, I can't add the the mask points aren't moving. Like I can I can give you some specific advice on that. Um, there's a few different things I want to show you as well, but I'm just going to go back through the exporting. So the only bits that I'm really bothered about are the bits that are um, because there's like this footage is eight seconds long, and the first two seconds and two point one nine seconds are the bit where the animation happens. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to drag the top of my timeline here down to about five seconds. So there, yeah, new duration, five seconds. And I'm going to go to export. I'm not going to click the export button. I'm going to click the arrow 
and I'm going to drop down and add the queue and then I'm going to click in out area um, and I'm just going to delete all the ones that I've previously exported because I've got a bunch so yeah. and the way to check the duration of your, your export file is it'll tell you there so it's five seconds um, I might have just started that by mistake so added me in and out points I've got the default preset of YouTube 1080 um, I'm not gonna there's no need to change that to be honest you can make custom ones I'll probably go over making custom ones again um, for now don't worry about it. YouTube 1080p is fine I'm mean, on the output bit if you click on the file name it'll tell you where it's going you can also rename it so I'm just gonna I am just gonna call that one car mask and then I'm just gonna click start exporting and that will slowly but surely uh, tick through the footage hopefully it'll give you a little progress bar you'll also get a little preview in the bottom left of what it's doing it will more often than not give you a time remaining but it does that thing like the same what Premiere does where sometimes it'll say like 48 hours and then all of a sudden it'll jump and it'll be like a minute so if you get like a mad I think I once got one and it was seven seven million hours remaining and then after about two hours it, it, it exported so don't worry about it um, no stress so yeah, finished. And if you click on the output file again, that'll just take you directly to where it is and it'll sort of highlight it. So we, we can have a little play of that in the video player. It'll always, 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 Windows will always lag the first time you play it through as well for some reason. Um, but there it goes off the screen. And you can see there, so you can see on my tracking points, it's pretty good, the tracking, till it gets to about here. And then it starts having a bit of a wobble. So you see there, it sort of goes up. So again, you can edit those keyframes and, and the position on that, but for, for just this, this purpose, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm fairly happy with my mask as well, to be totally honest with you. Not to brag, like, not to blow me on trumpet on a Friday, but it, I'm, the text being revealed from it, the car's not clipping through it, so it, it does look quite like the text is coming from behind it. Um, and that was just the attention to detail of zooming in and making sure the points are in the right place uh, at any given moment. I'm going to have a quick break so that I can change all this around because I need to delete some stuff out of here um, and set up for the little next the, the next little exercise to show you guys. Um, I need to just find where the footage is. Um, so I'm going to just put the break screen on. I won't be 10 minutes. It'll have a 10 minute countdown timer, but I won't be that long. I'll be about five minutes. Um, Charlotte definitely wants to get an animation. Um, will there be any chances, of course, is that would be do a hand drawn frame by frame. Um, Lisa's done something like that in the past when she did a, when she was at university. So it it's worth putting it in like the surveys and just just keep hammering us on it. Um, I'm not very good at drawing, which is why I do all my animation digitally because I kind of draw to save my life. Um, what I might what I might look at in these later ones is drawing the mouth shapes to do like a character, um, like a speech. That might be something I do. Lisa would be the person to ask for a, a physical hand-drawn frame-by-frame animation because I know she's done it before um, with drawn, scanning them in and then doing like a JPEG sequence. It is possible. And I, I, to be honest, if you had the drawings, I could show you how to do it. I'm not going to draw anything because it's all... I might do a stickman one if I have to. Um, but cool. I'll get set up for the next little activity and you guys can let me know how, how you're getting on. Um, with understanding, I know Sue's saying she understands it all, so that's good. Um, right, I will be not 10 minutes, I will be five minutes at the very most. Um, won't be long.
Okay, I'm back. I told you, less than five minutes. Um, so, the, what is Hit Film like compared to Premiere Pro? It's actually very, very good. I was talking to Daniel about it yesterday. It's it's like, for being a free software, it's the best free software I've ever used, to be totally honest with you. Um, I think it's got its problems in that you've seen some of the problems I've had with it lagging. Um, but it costs now and it works almost the same as Premiere. Some of the effects for animation you need to buy as add-ons, but it does all the basics um, and, and quite a little bit more than just the basics actually as well. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely it's definitely worth checking it out, mate, for, for sure. Um, it's it's class. If you've got a good enough computer, so that's the other thing. It it, it can the, the the good thing about it is they put all these settings in so you can have like your your resolution knocked right down, and um, so you can have everything on like fastest, and you can have your pause resolution on like a quarter, um, which, which is really handy if you, if you're working on a machine that's not so great. Uh, right, okay, so <clears throat> I've got another little effect that I made. Well, I didn't make, but I, I found quite useful yesterday, and I'll just show you the little preview video that I've got. If Windows is going to not lag. So again, this is another example of putting text behind something. Um, so one more time through that, because it's quite quick. So this one's not using a mask. This one's actually... A little bit different so we're gonna use it it's it, this one sort of sort of cheating a little bit um, you'll see why in a minute so this one works quite well with silhouetted characters it the, the opposite of it when the character is really light but the backgrounds really dark is also a way to do it and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second <clears throat> but basically in that folder in the Google Drive folder a day I added some more footage as well, and it was this. Um, oh man, I've got so much garbage on my computer, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, this is it. So it's just a video of some a silhouetted woman doing some what I would say is very bad boxing technique because <laughs> her hands, uh, you, you need to be up, you're gonna get punched in the face. Anyway, not to critique her too much, you know, she's given us this footage for free, so this is royalty free footage and all. Um, so I'm going to right click on that and go to make a composite shot again <clears throat> and I'm just going to call this um, boxing mask and press enter <clears throat> so as always it's brought the video footage in there and what I want to do next is straight away I'm going to duplicate the layer so I'm just going to do control and D and that will duplicate me layer um, for now, I'm going to turn that the bottom one off. You probably don't have to, to be totally truthful with you. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little effect to this layer. Now, again, this will because because of this part, all these parts of the frame, even as she moves, are silhouetted, so that they're sort of blacked out. So that the tree line um, as well as her are all in a, a sort of silhouette. So we can add a little effect to this. So if I drop that down and go over to effects. And in that box there, search, if I just search for loom, I can't spell it. Um, it's luminescence there. So luminescence key, add that. Now straight away, you can see there it's sort of cropping the frame out a little bit. If I drop down that luminescence key um, and change the threshold. So um, I don't want to key out dark, I want to key out brighter, I think. Is that one turned off? Key out brighter, yeah. And turn threshold up a little bit. I think he does a, we did a low threshold yesterday. Uh, is that one turned off? I have you math, that's what I want to do. Like that. So if I click right, right I'll tell you what, let me just let me go back. <laughs> this one's a little bit trial and error, but it'll work well with silhouetted one. So on your effect, um, luminescence key, and 
drop that down. It'll be on key out darker, so we'll be looking to key out like the dark parts of the image, as in take them away. Drop that to key out brighter. Um, and then what I want to do here as well is click this view mat. So at the moment, we've lost all that, all the bits that are in white. So we want to drag that. Sorry, we've lost all the bits that are in black. Um, so you want to drag that to the point where most of the frame, apart from the woman and the little bit of tree line, are in black. So now if I play that, can you see we've now got a mask. It's it's automatically masked out her movement based on how light or dark it is. So all the bits that are in white are bits that will still be visible. All the bits that are in black are bits that will disappear. Um, so what that allows us to do then, if I untick view, what you'll have to do here is untick view mat because it'll make an absolute mess. If I turn that other layer back on, so I've got two video layers and they're both the same video, but one of them I've added that um, effect on and keyed out all the bright areas. So when it says key out brighter, what that means is within that frame, all these bright areas, all the bright areas that are now black have been removed from that video. So as far as that video layer is concerned, everything in white is visible. Everything in black is now invisible as in transparent. So the reason we have two now is we basically have one on the top, which is like got all the transparency in between. Then we have one on the back, which has still got the sunset behind it. So if I just untick me view mat, I can now put something in between these two layers and it'll appear like she is on top of it because I'll still have the background in there. So if I add some text in, um, uh, let's go for something corny like box clever. Um, and remember, come down to me text window that's over here. And I probably want to oh, select me text. I like the text and I want to give it a different font. So remember, click on a font and then use your arrow keys to just cycle through. I'm just going to go for something random. Um, something random, but not awful, hopefully. Yeah, that'll do. It's not horrendous. Um, you can up the size as well, so you can have like 200 maybe. Uh, possibly more, actually, not five. Oh, no, 500 is too much. 350 might be all right. Drag that in the frame. So at the minute, because it's not in between those two layers, it's it looks like it's over the top. But if I grab that text layer, put it in the middle, can you see I've basically done a little sort of trick of the eye. So that top layer there is only the black parts that's shown. So if I untick that and put me, and then if I put me um checkerboard background on. So the checkerboard background, remember, is the transparent bit. So that bottom layer is just the normal video. That bottom layer there is just the normal video with no transparency in it. Um, the top layer, I've keyed, I've used that luminescence key to key out all the bright parts, yeah? So key out brighter, and then I've just played with that threshold to, to show what I key out. So I, when it's on one, it's not keying anything out, so it's got all the brightness in it. And if I drag that down, can you see it's slowly but surely taking the brightness out of the frame? To the point where I'm just left with um, something like that, probably. Yeah, so I'm just left with the silhouette. If I scrub through that silhouette, is just all that's going to be in that frame, and the checkerboard in the background is then transparent. So I can I have the two video layers. I have the one that's the full opacity one, yeah, with the, all the background and her intact, and then above that, if I put something, it becomes between the one where it's just the black. So we'll turn that text back on um, and just give it a little play through. Yeah, something like that. So that she's moving. And what you can then do is you can move your text. So you can now animate your text so that it's moving in between those two layers. So you've got your background and the one with the transparency, and then you just want to bring some text in the middle so that it looks like it's behind her. Um, and with this one, because of the way the, the image is framed, it's going to look like, if I grab the text, um, if it will allow it, if I grab the text and drag it down, can you see, because I've cut out the, um, masked out the little tree line, it's going to look like the text can appear from that tree line. So, as in it's behind that. 
you can do little bits and pieces like this in Photoshop, but I find this to be quite useful. Um, so the Luma key, luminescence key, works with the light, so it's, it's removing light from the frame. So we're not actually, because could you imagine, just for a minute, just to recap on what we did in the first half of the session, if every frame she moves her hands, so that's a, I would have to draw a mask around all of that, yeah? And then I'd have to jump a frame ahead, and then I'd have to move the mask to be in line with, say, I've, I've even even just take our hands for now, our hands are moving so much. So every frame, you see that would move. So every frame I would have to come in and draw, like remove all the, the mask points. So you might start like there or there, and you've got all these points that you'd have drawn using your pen tool um, or your free foot, free hand mask tool. You'd have drawn all those points around there. And then when she moves, you've got to move all those points as she moves. And it gets to the point here so you see I, i'm this is one frame at a time that i'm moving as well so that would be like a really really tedious way of doing it because unlike the car the car the back um like bumper and window of the car they do their shape doesn't change but her shape as as an object in the in the frame as a as a, a moving part of the frame is, is changing constantly so the shape of our body is is adapting um to that frame that's not right, adapting that frame. It's, it's moving within the frame, sorry. So you'd have to constantly animate your mask frame by frame. And as you can see there, that's I've skipped about 100 frames here and I'm only like two seconds into the video. So that would be absolutely tedious. So you can do little tricks like this um, where you change your... It's like you're using the lighting of the video to cheat, basically. It's not cheating, it's just being a bit clever. It's boxing clever, if, if you like. Um... So I will, I'll animate the text and then I'll go back over what I've done, um, just so you guys are aware. So I'm going to just change that back to scale of fit. And I'm going to have my text, I'm going to rename my text um, to what it says, so I know what, it, what layer is what. And I'm going to start my text from the bottom, so I'm going to have my text creep in through, the, um, through that tree line. Someone is at the door as well, so actually two seconds. Ah, Dan's going to get it. Right, cool. Good lad. Um, so, I want the text to start here. So, at zero seconds, zero seconds in, yeah. Um, I'm going to drop down that, transform, and I'm going to set a keyframe for position. Yeah. So, that's where it's going to start. And then I say, let's just scrub through a little bit. So we're going to go to a point where she's done a, a few sort of movements with her hands. We'll go to four seconds, yeah. And at four seconds, um, at four seconds, I want the text to come up to there. so can you see when it just hits the top so basically I've started there off the screen yeah I've moved the time out of four seconds and I've said I wanted to finish there so that's what those two keyframes are doing uh, so let's just do a little playthrough of that it's just gonna slowly but surely animate up and what you'll see is the path when you do an animation you'll see this little path here so the point a point b obviously point a and point b is a very simple animation if there's more than one if there's sometimes there's more than two points because it's doing a lot more and um, but it gets to there now can you see with the luma key when it gets to here on the top of our head it's gone a little bit sort of skew with as in there's a little bit that isn't actually a head it's just part of the video i think so if you're getting stuff like that, you can drop that back down, drop back down the top layer there and go back to your luminescence key and just have a play about with the threshold again. Um, to bring back in a little bit of our head. And I think you can also Maybe 1.7. Try that. Ah, 
no, 0.07, sorry. Again, trial and error. careful with this because what you'll notice as well is further down when you're changing the threshold see if I bring that back in now you see the text isn't quite coming in from the right place anymore so be, be careful with this uh, let's go back to 0 0.2 let's try 0 0.15 0.15 looks pretty good what you can also do um, is speed up that animation a little bit as well <laughs> Looks like the text slice now in half. I know it's like sort of getting getting in the, an eyeful there. Uh, um, if I view the map again, down to zero. That might cut that out a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. What I might do there then. Also, I might just change where that text finishes. So if I go to that last keyframe there, I might just click on that and just move the position just a touch. But it's not quite over our head. In fact, I can probably have it finish off the screen, to be honest with you. Um, Back down. I'm gonna drop that down again. I'm gonna put that back on 0 0.7 and see how that looks. So that's the threshold that I'm changing there, yeah. Ah, I've done it again. That needs to be 0 0.07. My apologies. That's twice I've done that now. Numbers, man. I'm, I'm not made for like all these numbers and mathematics and all that kind of thing. So there, a little bit in the second on our there, come back to where it's doing it. Um, okay. I'll behave and actually play when I press play. And again, the faster you make your animation as well, the, the, the better, it'll, the less mistakes you'll notice. I don't know if that um, that layer behind it's lagging a little bit, you know. Hang on. Because I can't see that overlapping. So when I play through this, so if I just play through, let's just make a white background for a second. I think I've done something with a layer underneath. Just make a white plane on the bottom. Ah, can it can't be white because that's gonna I won't see the text. Come on now, use your brain. Let's make uh, this color layer instead. So you see, it's not it's not actually do it's working quite well on this, and that the video layer underneath. So you see, it is behind her. But I think there's some weird overlap with that layer on the bottom. Hmm. Don't know how though, because I haven't actually done anything with this video layer. I might bring it back in. I might just be. I'm going to delete that layer out. Drag that one back in. It is Friday brain for everything's just not working. Like I'm just, you know, I'm trying to play play white text on a white background. God knows what I'm playing at. Is it the same size? Have I scaled this down? I wonder if I've done something really stupid here. 
It wouldn't be the first time I've done something stupid just to um just to let you know. No scales on hundred percent position. Oh hang on a second. I reckon. Yeah, okay, I know what I've done. <laughs> so you see, what I've done is I've accidentally dragged the footage slightly off. So the position of the text on the top layer is 13 minus 13.3 and minus 13.3. But the position of the video layer on the bottom is zero and zero. So the, the layers are slightly out of sync. So instead of them being directly on top of each other, one of them slightly off to the side, which is why it's making it look like it's doing a cutting effect. So we don't want that. So to just get rid of that, go back to that top layer and just reset these to zero and zero. I knew something didn't look right. Um, so if I turn that layer back on now, and now I render my footage. There we go. Okay, there you go. Very simple and easy mistake to make then. So see now when it passes our head, can you see it's not cutting our head in half anymore. Now, the reason it was doing that is because my two sets of footage weren't on top of each other directly, which is very easy to do because all you have to do to accidentally drag footage away is get this, this selection tool here and just drag on it. And can you see there? Now they're now out of sync. So if I, if I scrub through that, they're playing slightly out of sync, which to be honest looks kind of cool, but it sort of ruins the effect. <laughs> that, does that make sense? Um, if you've accidentally dragged your footage out, it's sometimes really like it's a slight move so the, the box will be like slightly off center so can you see like that blue line isn't quite on the edge one way to come back in drop that down drop down transform again make sure your position is on zero and zero yeah so I'm sort of in a way glad that I made that mistake because that's quite a common one as well um, dragging stuff out of position ever so slightly so we'll just we'll just render that once more and we'll have a little play through now that everything's in line and in sync not like the um, the boy band never again um, yeah so there, there it goes the text behind her and you're just using that luminescence key uh, to key out the bright areas you, you could also do the opposite you could key out the the light area so if you had a bit of video footage where it was sort of the opposite as in it was a person who was really well lit on a very dark background you could try and key out the, the dark background as well um, ideally if you would do if you were recording it properly I know Daniel roughly went over using green screen footage ideally you'd have a very plain green or blue background that's well lit that you could take out and it's always worth trying things like the luminescence key uh, where it's gone you'll be able to see your mat as well so when you click that view mat button it's going to show you what's going to be left behind which in this case it's done a really good job in some cases it looks awful um let me just save that quickly and i'll show you so in some cases you end up with like um like that where it's all pixelated in the middle so if you were to play that i think it would look a little bit So can you see, uh -huh, let's, let's scroll back for it. So there, you, so because I've, I've changed the settings to a point where it's a little bit like, you end up with this pixelation here and it's not a great look. So you just need to try and avoid that. Um, we'll get that back to 0.07. Um, it's just, the reason it works with green or blue screens, it's the easiest color um, for the, like the software to work it out. So, it, it's there's something scientific to it but i just know that it's it's the, the easiest way to do it um it, it as long as to be honest with you as long as it's a distinct color it should work um tends to be green screen usually, usually gives you a bit noise less noise um but it depends on what you're shooting as well so um Sometimes you just want to do like a, a basic color correction to the background. So you might just want to make it all white um, or you might just want to make it all one color. Sometimes you're adding in a, 
like a scene that you've built so you someone might have designed a scene in the likes of after effects or hit film express or whatever it is where they've they've made computer generated buildings with loads of different textures from like 3d models which is really complicated but that's how they do it in in films and that um blue screens will tend to give you i think less of what you call a color spill where sometimes when you've seen something recorded on a green screen or a photo has been taken on a green screen the the green of the the walls or the backdrop will reflect onto the person so the green spills onto their like skin which then affects how well you can position them in another like environment it's it's pretty tough that one to be honest um one thing i did want to go over again quickly i will grab some music and add it to this as well just I'm, I'm going to trim me clip down as well so I'm going to do a quick little preview and, and get an idea of where I want it to end so I've just got that uh, so I'll render that up so the text is just gets to the top I think this should be alright to do on about 5 seconds because I think the animation of the text goes up to 4 seconds um, stop so we'll trim this down. So I'll grab my timeline. Remember, I'll get the marker on five seconds. I'll just drag that to snap to that. Um, duration five seconds. Yeah, cool. So this is a five second animation. I'm going to add a little bit of sound to this. What you could also do is remember you can add effects to your text layer if you if you so want, so wish. And um, you drop that down. And then there's the effects panel there, and you've got like your your standard stuff like a drop shadow or a stroke. I believe. Did I have, oh no, hang on, they don't have a stroke on this one. Um, there's a bunch of different options you can add on. You can, I don't actually use the cartoon one before. I might just drag it on for the crap and see what it does. Um, so if I drop that cartoon effect down, preset. Um, there's a few presets on there. I mean, like a line art. I can make it a neo. Oh god, that's awful. I kind of like the line art one. Um, you can scale the detail up, so you can have it zero. Is obviously it'll not show you any detail at all. If you scale it to the right, that'll be the maximum level of detail it can have. That obviously looks awful. So we might go for like two, maybe three. Try three. Um, size. Size two is the maximum. Obviously, if you have that on zero as well, it'll not show any of the effect at all. Threshold, I'm not actually sure what threshold's doing there. We'll leave that as it is. Um, the fill. Oh dear. Um, so just have a play with some of these settings. Be saturation. And your brightness or the brightness of the effect. Um, I'll leave them on one. So basically, yeah, you can have, have a few different play about play about with the, the, the effect. Um, so that's just a cartoon style animation to that. I'm actually going to take that one off and I'm going to go with and have a look what the rest of them are. So there's a bunch in there. Um, motion trails will add a motion trail effect to it i think so i don't know how well so you see i was talking about the motion blur this can add a motion trail as when something's moving quite quick um and it basically what it does is it duplicates itself over and over um and you can edit the settings on this to change it so let me drag that so the more motion blurred you want um so what i might do with that if i set the frame radius to zero it won't be blurred at all so if I go back to the start, and as it's coming in, I have the frame radius on 10, okay, and I set a keyframe there, and then I have it move into frame a little bit, and then I say, okay, at that point, I want it to stop being, um, like, having that motion trail on it. So I then set that to zero. It's added a keyframe. On that keyframe, it is 10. The motion trail's on 10. On this keyframe here, it's on zero, so it's like it's coming into like focus as it comes into the frame. So I need to render it so you can see actually, because it won't. Let me just do me a little preview again. 
everyone's going to be real familiar with that preview button by the end of today, which is a good thing. And it should sharpen up. So it comes in blurry and then it sharpens up so that you can see it. Yeah, so it's giving it that, that little motion there. Yeah, so it's like it's coming into it's coming into focus as it comes in the frame. Yeah, so it comes in out of focus, and then it goes into focus there, and that's the motion trills. So have a little play around with your effect, and you can animate the effect so that they're not, um, you know, that effect doesn't have to, doesn't have to be blurry the whole time. It can start blurry and come in to focus, like I've just shown you there. I'm gonna stop saying the word focus now because that's about eighty times in a minute. But you get the picture. Um, I can cover. I'm going to cover that in a little bit more detail because what I want to also look at is the um, there's something called the um, the value graph. So the value graph. I'm not going to go into great detail, but this is probably what we're going to work on next week a little bit as well when we do the shapes. So we're going to look at animating some shapes using that that mask tool, the freehand mask tool to create them. And then we're going to look at the motion of them and how we move them. Um, but this this graph here is like the velocity of the object. So the object being the text here, yeah. So I've got me two keyframes. And where is my second one actually? Um, am I in the right place here? Ah, is it right? And you see, you click on my position. So it starts there. It gets to there, yeah. So the velocity at the minute is just a straight line. I can make that a curve if I just undo that. Um, except, where's the button to make it a curve? Manual Bezier, that's it there. So the curve of this is how quick it is. So right there is your speed. So when it's a straight line, it just sort of goes in one at one speed. So that's it traveling at one speed. Yeah. So it's going, let's preview it and I'll show you what I mean. So that straight line is it's going from that to that at one standard speed. Um, what you can do is you can make it into a curve so that it, it sort of creeps out a little bit slower. So if I set it, um, if I drag that out, back down, Drag it back out like that. Stop dragging it up, man. I just change the curve a little bit and then preview it now. <clears throat> Instead of it going at one speed, it's sort of going to slowly but surely creep in that's the speed increase in there and then it's gonna sort of go a bit quicker a bit quicker and then it's gonna slowly creep out as well and again so you can see the speeds picked up massively in the middle there as well and then it sort of slows down as it goes off so that slowly creeps in and then it, then it speeds up so that that's a velocity thing so that curve is it's going slow so imagine it like a little bit like a roller coaster is the way I always think of it so it's sort of creeping in, creeping in, creeping in, and it speeds up, speeds up, slows down again. Yeah, that that's the worst roller coaster you'll ever go on in your life as well, mate. Um, but you, yeah, so you, it, it's over time as well. So I know that that animation from point A to point B is five seconds, but I'm controlling the speed at which the, the thing moves in between that. So it's only going to last five seconds in time, but the speed that it moves at in that time can be edited using this graph editor. Um, or the, it's called in in hit film expert. It's called the value graph. If you look it up on the internet, you might see it called the graph editor. That's what it means. Um, don't worry about it too much for now. I've just added it on just to sort of introduce you to it. Um, it it's worth knowing about because you can control the speed. It's the example that they always use when they're teaching it, and then one of the first times I ever learned to use it was a car. So if you're animating a car, you don't just want it to, from a start from a standing start. You don't just want it to zoom off like that. You want it to slowly but surely start picking up speed and then maybe speed off. Yeah. So you don't just your car. You don't get in your car and put your foot down and it goes sixty miles an hour straight away. There's a there's a not to sixty. So that's that's recreating that motion. 
Um, and that's how you do it. You do it with this little this little nifty graph. That looks really confusing, but I, I promise you it's not. Um, it's not too bad, actually. And I don't know how to actually get out of this view now. Ah, there we go. So I'm going to add a little bit of music to this, and then I'm going to export it with that. So I was grabbing me music from the YouTube audio library, um, which I will find for you right now. So... This is it. It's giving me loads and loads of like annoying sounds, but you can see there's just a bunch of free music on it. If you Google YouTube audio library, you will get access to a bunch of it. And it's so it's this one here. Click on that. Um, and then there you are. So this is quite good because. Um, it's just all this can be used in like YouTube videos. I think if I click on Audio Library Classic, it'll take us to the old version where you can click between, you can search for sound effects as well. So you can type in a sound effect to find there and there's just a bunch. So there's 50 cal shells dropping here. That, that was playing for you guys, but it wasn't playing for me, which is a bit weird. Yeah, I'm not hearing that for some reason. I don't know why. Ah, I do know why. I've got me, I've got me sound muted. Yeah. So if you want a cricket to chirp, and you know when I've been telling me jokes today, Daniel can probably edit in some uh, some cricket to chirp over the top. So you've got all your sound effects in here. This is this is your godsend when you you're animating a project, like say you're doing a short animation about something to do with um, DIY. And you can get your, your cordless drill sound effect in there and it, it just takes your animations to the next level sometimes um, there's also the, the the free music which again if you've got like a quite a drab bit of it's not drab but like you know not not much is happening that car was driving down the road basically if you put a bit of music over the top of that this this woman's throwing some random punches so we're just gonna get some um let, let's get some relaxing music actually That's 10 minutes long, I'm not downloading that because it'll take ages. Um, what's this? Forgiven Fate. Oh, that's a bit too calm, that one. Um, that'll do. I love that. You just click on the download button. I think you have to be signed into YouTube um, and it'll just go straight into your downloads. Come back into HitFilm Express. Go back to your media panel. Let import that. And I'm going to go to my downloads. Shasta Trinity is the one. And it's just conforming the audio, so it's just bringing that in. I'm just going to drag that straight into the, into the frame. And I'm just going to preview. Hopefully, the preview should play the sound. If you're having issues with the sound not playing back when you're playing your footage, um, Make sure you do a preview and then it should play it properly. We've got a couple of questions that I missed as well. Um, yeah, Charlotte, you're right. Not a lot of people wear green. If you do wear a green t-shirt on a green screen, you will look like some kind of floating arm and leg ghost. Why are you not playing my sound? How dare you, sir? Ah, it's not playing the sound because it hasn't started yet. Okay, right. I'll tell you what, let me just delete that out then. Two seconds. Um, can you increase the line art range automatically as it goes up the screen or do you need to work frame by frame? Um, it's You can do it so you can set like a keyframe at the start and a keyframe at the end and it'll work out the bits in between. I would try and avoid doing things like effect frame by frame, like when you're adding, say, a shadow or something to a text. Don't bother doing that frame by frame. Tell it what you want it to be at the start. So you want it to be zero at the start. And then by the time it gets to the end, tell it you want it to be a different value. And they'll add the two keyframes in and it'll work out the difference in between, remember? So that's the that's the tweening aspect of it. Um, with me sound quickly, just to get this wrapped up, because I know time's ticking on. I'm going to go to a point where the, the music started. So the waveform has started there. I'm going to mark an in point and then I'm going to drag that into my frame. That's why it wasn't playing. 
because I was trying to play audio that there was there was no sound playing at that time. Now we're like uh, 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 stuck in in the time warp now because it's rendering this little this little footage. stop yeah so i think that's about it so I, i've added a little bit i used the graph so that it sort of slowly creeps in and it pings off for quite fast and then slows down at the top again yeah um, i think when i did that it sort of had a little mess about with me effect as well so i'm just gonna grab that and bring it in a little bit So you see, because I'd changed the speed of it, it was coming into the frame too slow for us to see that blur and sharpen up. So as it gets to there now, yeah. So if I just, I'm going to export this now. Um, the last little bit I put on there, don't worry so much about. Have a go with the masks and that today, guys. Um, and then worry about adding your effect in. I'm going to recover it next week anyway, so don't don't worry too much about it. Uh, I'm just going to give that a different name and then press export. If for now, if I get you guys to fill in the survey, um, anything you want to see. So Charlotte, I know you want to do the hand drawn stuff as well. Um, and, and Sue, you've got, you've had some, some really good questions today. So if you can, if you can drop them in the survey, if there's anything you extra you want to see. Um, yeah, I, I, I've, I've gone a little bit jumped a little bit ahead of myself as I always do with that last bit there but it's just way so I did a really basic thing with that luma key and then I just wanted that text to have a little bit more detail to it so I made it a little bit blurry as it as it sort of went up and I changed the speed of the animation so it's sort of lingering from the bottom and then whipping off to the top yeah I'm gonna cover it again next week so don't worry too much about you know the last little bit and um, we'll just have one little play of this through while you guys fill that survey in so yeah, and then we'll play that again. So you see it creeps in out of focus and then it sort of pings off to the top. Again, I could edit it so that it, it lingers. So that, that graph that I changed, I, when it gets to this point, I could have it slowly creep out, but it's sort of still pinging off to the top. Just try the narrow with it, guys. Um, all the footage you need is in the Google Drive, as well as that little PNG showing you where the, the preview button is. I'm going to get out of your hair now. Um, I'm gonna leave the stream on for a few minutes if you've got any questions let me know if you're watching the video back so I know a few of you guys are doing catch up and you will be coming back to it you've got the email um, I've emailed out everyone's enrollment forms as well that I know has been on so far if I get those back there's two so there's one for the original one day course that was a few weeks ago and then there's one for like last week this week and all the ones going forward so I only need two from you if you can get them back to us as soon as you possibly can, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll leave the stream on. If you guys have got any questions, hide them in the chat. If not, email, Facebook, um, WhatsApp if you if you do WhatsApp. And thanks for being here. Thanks for asking questions and keeping it, you know, light and breezy and that. And then enjoy the rest of your Friday. I'm going to save. Remember to save your project as well and do the survey. Cool. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.